Good morning. Really good to be with you this morning. And things are a little bit different. I'm recording in my office. Um, it's work being done down in the church. So, you know, if you hear funny noises in the background, that's them busy cleaning up there. We started last week talking about prayer and I um, want to carry on with that topic especially in light of what is happening in our country now. And it's so good to see so many churches, so many individuals mobilizing around prayer and really getting into this this spiritual warfare by getting on our knees and um, pleading with God and inviting God into what is happening. Now, prayer, like we said, is something that is foreign to a lot of people. Although all, all religions pray, there's not many people who actually know how to pray. And like we said last week, if you had a measure on a scale of 1 to 10, it's going to be pretty low for most of us. And I've never met anybody that has got this prayer thing down, that it says, look, I know how to do it. I'm, I've got a doctorate in prayer. You know, I, I pray. I've met people like that, but I meet a lot of people, so... I don't actually know how to pray. I feel inadequate when I pray, or, or even like, um, like some have said, you know, I just don't attempt prayer because I don't know what to say to God. So being being confused about prayer is not, it's not an issue. It's not a problem. In fact, it opens a door that allows you and I to uh, to talk about the topic and to learn about the topic. Now, I know for some people who've been working, walking with the Lord a really long time, this could be considered to be oh, a little bit below me and what am I going to learn? But I want to encourage you to stick with it and to hear what the Lord has got to say to us on this topic. I'm going to talk to you today about the Lord's Prayer. Now, I know you've heard so many things about the Lord's Prayer and messages and songs and whatever, but I encourage you, stay tuned, get your Bible out, make notes, and go to God with what you hear today and let Him talk to you about why He gave that specific prayer. Now, how the Lord's Prayer came about is, you know, these disciples that had been walking with Jesus, they'd watched him do miracle upon miracle. They watched him heal the dead and raise the sick, and they knew he was this wonderful teacher. But not once do we hear them say or read about them saying, Lord, teach us how to do miracles. Lord, teach us how to how to raise the dead. Lord, Teach us how to have as much wisdom as what you've got. No, they never ever did that. But what they did do was go to go to Jesus and say, Lord, teach us how to pray. Because they'd been watching him. And they could see that these power came from that time of communicating with God the Father. And so they realized this is important, this is critical. And if only you and I would, would realize that and we would get to a place where, where, where prayer becomes the foundation on which we build our life and we start our day and we continue to pray throughout the day, then I think we could really lead powerful and effective lives. And if you look at Jesus, that's basically what he did. He always went off to go and pray. And more often than not, he prayed by himself. Um, now, I'm all into group prayers. I love praying in groups because I want to hear what other people are saying, what God is talking to them about. But prayer is also a very individual thing. And people like Angus Buchan and a number of other other people have got, um, got a prayer closet or a prayer blanket or whatever. And they really just cover themselves or go into a place where they're all alone and they pray. We we embarked on this past week um, 24 hours of, of prayer and if you missed that you can go look at the video on our on our um, Facebook page. And um, so V and myself had this hour to to um, pray together 
and I thought it's a good idea uh, to ask our grandchildren to come sit in. I didn't expect them to sit for an hour. I'm not that mean. But um, I asked them just to come and say their prayers and we explained to them why we're praying and against the violence and the looting and COVID and all of that. And they prayed such simple yet powerful prayers. I couldn't exactly make out what my grandson said, but it was something to this effect. Lord, make the bad things better. And I just smiled to myself because, first of all, it was a prayer of faith. And second of all, it was just so plain and so simple. And often we should look at the children and learn from them how simple prayer really is. Last week, um, I told you, why don't you just use this sort of model? Start off with, with how things are. How was your day? Go to things that are concerning you, the head things, and then drop to the heart issues, those things that are deep within you. Pray about them. And then the fourth thing was listen, because that's when God responds to us. We don't make time to listen to God. But anyway, I'm getting off topic, and um, we want to talk about the Lord's Prayer. So the Lord's Prayer appears twice in the Scriptures, in Matthew and in Luke. In Matthew... Um, it's in Matthew 6, uh, you'll see it's, uh, the Lord talks about how to pray when he's doing the Sermon on the Mount. And in Luke chapter 11, this is when the disciples come to Jesus and say, Lord, please teach us how to pray. And this is how Jesus does it. Now, different translations are going to have different interpretations of that prayer. And I think that the best version of it is the one that we learned at school as youngsters. I mean, we had to learn the Lord's Prayer by heart. I don't know about you. I think it's a good thing. But we learned the King James Version. And so that's the one I'm going to focus on. I've got this Bible here that gives the King James Version, the New King James, the NIV, and the New Living Translation. And um, so we're going to be talking through the Lord's Prayer. Now, there are small differences between Matthew and Luke. And um, we'll explain why there's differences. And I'll explain why that if you go read it in the NIV, it doesn't have the last part, the doxology, it doesn't have it there. I'll explain all of that. But I think if you want to learn to pray and you want to do it effectively, then why are we not praying the Lord's Prayer? Surely, if... The disciples asked Jesus, teach us to pray. Jesus was not going to teach them a prayer that wouldn't move God. He wasn't going to teach them something that wasn't effective. He wasn't going to teach them something that could lead to something bigger, something better and deeper and really move heaven and have heaven invade earth. I think Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. So why don't you get out your Bibles and join me in, um, we're first going to look at Matthew 5 and then, uh, Matthew 6, sorry, and then in Luke 11. So, it says, and now I'm reading from the King's James, so it's got thee and thou, okay, so just stick with me, but this is how we taught, um, how we were taught as youngsters. Our Father, which art in heaven. Okay, our Father. Now, Jesus goes on to explain this about the Father. He says, would a father give his children something they didn't ask for or something that is bad for them? No. So he's saying when we pray to our Father, we should expect a good answer and the right answer from God. Our Father is the relationship. That is how we approach God because the, the perception is that fathers are wise and fathers provide. And this is why we start off with our Father who art in heaven. And I, so we give who we pray to and what is his address, okay? Who art in heaven who reigns from on high, who is over all, yet he is in all. So you're declaring by that 
the majesty of God and how you see God as a father who wants to provide for his children. And it goes on to say, hallowed be thy name. Now in the NLT it says it like this, may your name be kept holy, hallowed be your name. And we learn something there of the significance of this name. And it says in other places that anything that you ask for in the name of Jesus will be given to you. Why? Because it's a powerful name. The scripture says it's a name above all names. Hallowed be your name. May your name be made holy. How do you make a name holy? By our actions, by our works for the Lord, by doing things in faith and because of faith, where we glorify that name of Jesus and we lift it up on high. Hallowed be your name. Now we get into the meat of this. Thy kingdom come. Guys, ladies, we are ambassadors. Okay? So thy kingdom come, thy will be done. May your kingdom come soon, Lord. But until it comes, I accept the responsibility as the representative, as the ambassador of Christ on earth. So where I'm walking, I am representing heaven. When I'm praying, I'm praying heaven into situations of the world. May your kingdom come. God's kingdom is going to return, it's going to rule, it's going to reign. But until then, you and I represent the kingdom. And just take this last week in South Africa with all this turmoil. We have been accurate representatives of the kingdom of God when we have got down on our knees and invited that God into this world of ours and said, Lord, we need you Yeah. Your kingdom come, Lord. Your will be done. Go. Okay. says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God's will has been done in heaven. That's what it's saying to us. But now God's will needs to be done on earth. And if you look around at what is happening, this doesn't look like God's will, does it? It looks like there's someone with evil intent behind us. There's someone who is like this bad to the bone behind all of what is happening. And not only the violence and the looting we've seen, but the murders and the rapes and the corruption and all of us. There's someone else driving this process on earth. And we need to introduce the Lord into those things. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is happening here? I can promise you folks, that is not God's will. It's not his will. But he will make a way for us through this seed of evil that is manifesting all over the world. Not only here. We, we, we tend to have a very narrow focus and think things are only going bad here. It is the same the world over. Good morals have become corrupted. People who stand for, for values are being laughed at and mocked and we're introducing derogatory terms and conditions on people. We, we're making what is, what is bad good and what is evil we're making acceptable all over the world. Now our If God's will is going to be done, it's going to be because you and I stand up and we take charge. We refuse to be molded and shaped by the world, but we get shaped and respond to God's will that is of heaven. And his will is for us to stand up and to be Jesus to others amidst the chaos. Not to get involved, become part of the problem, but to become part of the solution. Okay, so you see where we're going with this prayer. It's touching on every aspect of our life. Then it goes on to say, give us this day our daily bread. Lord, thank you that we can trust you for our daily needs. We can depend on you 
for our provision. Lord, even in good times and bad times, we know we can count on you. Lord, give us this day a daily bread. I think we become greedy and we expect more than what is necessary for that day. And when that doesn't come through, we think our prayers aren't being answered. But nothing is further from the truth because your daily needs have been taken care of. Most of us listening here, if not all of us, have a roof over our head. We have food to eat. It might not be the choicest cut of meat, but you've got something to eat to fill the tummy. You've got a warm place to sleep tonight. There's many people who don't have that because you need to pray that God provides those things. He's a good, good father. No? Our father who art in heaven is a father and a father is going to give to his kids what they need. Won't he? Of course he will. God is going to provide for our needs. Give us this day our daily bread. Then it goes on. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, uh, in, the, in the NLT, it says, Forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. It's much simpler, easier to understand. You know what? God says in his word, if we don't forgive others, he can't forgive us. Okay? We want the provision of God. We want answers from God. What is one of the things that can hinder the answers? What can, what can um, influence our life of prayer? I want to tell you, unforgiveness can. That's scriptural, and we will go into in the coming weeks this seven, eight reasons why prayers aren't answered. We'll go into that. But one of the things is taken up in the Lord's Prayer is you've got to go clean. We can't go in with this, with this dirty spot where we're unable to forgive someone else. I promise you, you know what? God has already forgiven that person. The only one that's holding on to, to them is you. And if you can't get to that place to forgive them, you're hindering your prayer life and you're hindering your walk with God. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't always help. Well, no, it never, it never helps to hold on to hurts. It never helps to hold on to pain or regrets. It always helps to release those things and to release those people to God. Let Him deal with them so that we can receive from God what God wants to give. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, I think a better translation of this was help us not to yield to, to temptation. Because when you read it like that, it's sort of, okay, God is going to tempt you. God's not going to tempt you. Okay? The devil tempts us. But what's actually meant is help us not to yield. Help us not to give in. Strengthen us, Lord, so when temptation comes, we are able to resist it. Okay? And we're able to turn our back. We can flee from temptation. That That is a more accurate uh, translation of what was actually meant here. Um, and it goes on to say, but to rescue us from the evil one. Now, now, why, why is it that deliver us from evil? Why do we need to be delivered from evil? Because evil pervades this world. Evil is everywhere. And the only way to get protection, the only way to get deliverance from evil is by asking God to be with you, to comfort you, to console you and to surround you with his presence so that evil cannot overcome you. You see, this gives an indication of, of, of what's happening on earth. But what is able to happen when we pray God into the situation, say your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, then evil, we can introduce good. And what does the, the Bible say? God uses for good everything that was intended for evil for those who love the Lord. And you see how this pans out. You see how it plays into our everyday lives. We're living in a sad, broken world. Yet, we are able to overcome the world because God is with us 
and God can deliver us when you pray into him or pray him into the situation and I, yeah, you, you're probably wondering now Lord uh, where's the rest of it when I was at school I learned a little bit more it didn't end there um, it was like not and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one amen there was a little bit more and that little bit more part is called the doxology and now why it isn't in most translations but it's in the king james is before this reason um they, well there's two reasons uh, there was early and later manuscripts and some of them included the doxology and others did not and so they went with the majority of the, the manuscripts that were found that were available didn't have it in and that is why in your NIV and many of your other translations it's not in there but it is in the King James and it's in there because they decided to go with the early version but also when the the reformation happened that is when when um, the catholic church actually experienced people breaking away and they were called protestants and um, the bible that was only reserved for the priests became available to everyone and king james asked for an english version so everyone could have a bible in their hands they felt that the doxiology um, ended it off better and actually followed scripture because the doxiology part which i'll recite to you now um, is very similar to a portion of scripture in two chronicles and it just worded it better uh, made it more relevant and actually glorified god so they followed the early manuscripts and they included it in there and I think it is fantastic. I think it belongs in there. And this is what the doxiology says. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom. Okay. Yours is the kingdom, Lord, now and forever. All glory, all power is yours, Lord. We thank you for that. And then we say amen and we end off with so be it for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever beyond this age lord despite what is happening in our lives you be glorified your power be evident you rule you reign we lift your name high so be it and this is our Jesus taught his disciples to pray. This is how he said, you need to go about it. This is what, what you need to do to connect you to the Father in heaven. And that's such a nice way to get to pray or to enter into prayer. And I encourage you to pray the Lord's Prayer. And as you go through, just expand add as you feel led add other things deliver us from evil and you can say lord man i don't like what's happening help me to understand help me not to hate uh, provide my daily needs yes lord you know it's been a bit of a tight month and um i've done my best lord but i'm a little bit short and you know you can actually take the lord's prayers a foundation and lead to all these things, these head issues, these heart issues, and then you can make time to listen. The Lord's Prayer is probably one of the greatest gifts given to you and given to me, because it really helps us get to the crux of the matter, to what the Lord requires of us, and allows God to enter every facet of our life. So I encourage you, pray the Lord's Prayer, learn it by heart if you don't know it, spend time with it. Let God really speak to you through this precious portion of Scripture. Go. Okay. So where you are now, let us close our eyes and together 
This might freak out a few people who are around you, but that's okay. They'll know you're busy praying. But let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Lord, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen, Lord. Thank you so much for listening. Please share the message. Um, I think we'll go over to weekly teachings from now on um, in terms of the Lord's Prayer. Probably going to release them on Wednesday, but we'll keep you updated. Just thank you for connecting with us. What's our motto here at Life Connect? Life is better connected. So thank you for connecting with us. Thank you for giving. We appreciate you. Keep praying um, for all the COVID patients as well. We've got so many people known to us and part of this church who are sick and we really ask that you cover them in prayer. Thank you. Bless you and give yourself a good pat on the back for sitting through this and not only sitting through this but learning from it and going out and making a difference. We love you. Bless you.